Um, and we are Velocities of Music, BIMTV today. Another 2010 album, killing it. This is the last one, guys. This is the last 2010 album. Well, we're going to do Ghostface. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, because technically that came out at the end of 2010. But we're done with 2010. We're getting over it. We're moving on after this one. We're going to do today Robert Plant's Band of Joy from 2010. Robert Plant, he was the lead singer of Led Zeppelin. Uh, way back in the day, he's been coming out with albums all the time now. Guy's super talented. Um, and, and one thing about this album that I want to note is that he, he really wanted to capture the sound of uh, you know recording and production of the 60s. And I think he did a good job mm -hmm. of that. But this album is moody. Um, band, band of Joy, I mean, it's Band of Joy. It sounds sounds like it should be kind of poppy and, and happy, but it's not that. It's very, very folksy. Um, it, in, in comparison, I think it sounded a lot like Zeppelin Three. Yeah. And, and it's just like stuff you'd hear around a campfire, very creepy at times, um, lots of atmosphere. Tom, what'd you think? Uh, I definitely agreed with all that assessment of the sound. Uh, as far as kind of the songwriting stuff goes, mm -hmm. I think that this is good, but not great. Right. I think it's enjoyable throughout. I don't think there's really any weak tracks. I also, honestly, I look at these, and there's not really any standout tracks. I'm going to have trouble thinking of track picks mm -hmm. um, for the website, just because I think they're all good, but none of them are. It doesn't have any really defining moments. Right. It's just kind of like, here's some of those bluesy, folksy rock songs, you know, that, that Robert Plant is into. One thing that I did find very impressive, though, is that even though he is aging, I thought that Robert Plant delivered a tremendously good vocal performance. Uh, I think his, his, there's still that youthfulness, yet, yet kind of aging wisdom in his voice, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Right, right. Um, and, and so I didn't, feel like, I didn't feel like there were any moments on this album where I thought, Man, this guy's getting old. He's mm -hmm. losing it. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought that it was it was strong throughout in that regard. I'll tell you what I missed though. I wish that there was just a few baby, baby, baby. I want yeah, more I of that. You yeah. know, where's where's that? Where, where is that? You're not trying. Are you not trying to seduce me anymore, I, Robert? Am I not sexy come enough? Come on, Robert anymore? Plant. I need come to be on. seduced. Yeah. Um, this is definitely a mood bomb. I, I I feel like Tom. Some of the reason why you're probably having trouble remembering some of the song, uh, songs is just because I don't feel like the songwriting is quite up to par. And at first I thought it was, and then with subsequent listens, once I got up to like the fifth and sixth listen of this over the past, you know, three weeks since we had some extra time with this set, um, I, I, I felt like it just didn't, I, I figured out kind of what he was doing, and then I realized that it's really not that cool. A lot, on, on several tracks, um, he, he develops these ideas, and I'm specifically talking about Harm Swift Way, House of Cards, um, Satan, your kingdom must come down. He develops these idea, this idea that's worked into the lyrics, and 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 it's not just the lyrics; it's the instruments too. But it's it's the whole package, the whole song. He develops this idea, and then it just kind of repeats and repeats and repeats, and it goes on for a long period of time, and it gets kind of mind numbing after a while. And I feel like it's just more of a mood maintenance sort of thing than actually adding anything additional to the album or general sound of the album. Um, and that kind of frustrates me at times because. It, the guy clearly is a genius, so I want more. Um, but on other album, on, I'm sorry, on other songs on the album, such as Silver Raider, Monkey, and the last track, even This Shall Pass Away, um, I, I feel like he, he's able to capture more of an atmosphere and do some really cool things with guitar and production. Um, like track uh, four, Silver Raider, Tom and I both um, independently came to the conclusion it sounds a lot like Radiohead's Lucky, a track 11 off OK Computer. Um, you know, there's a lot of good things to be said about that because it's Radiohead. I love Radiohead. Come on. But um, I just feel like at times this, this, this songwriting and mood doesn't quite mesh for me. I just don't feel like this is superbly strong. It's cool. There's some awesome things going on. But I just don't feel like this album is that strong. That's where I'm at. I completely agree. Okay. Um, lyrically, too, I get a little iffy in, in, here and there. I wish there was a little bit more depth to the lyrics, but the production, mm -hmm. instrumentation... Production is fantastic. Yeah, the guitar work that he uses on here, too, is, is great. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I really thought was a highlight. To me, this is this is a classic 71, just right above, in the 70s range, somewhere in there. I'm going to go 76. The, the, I, and I feel like this is the perfect score for this album. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like it, it's gonna anybody's going to have a hard time making a case that this is the best album of 2010. I don't think it's on any... Anybody that I've seen's top 2010 list. However, it could be wrong. So if you love this album, tell us why. I'm pumped to hear about somebody who loves Robert Plant. So I, I can't wait to show this album to my dad and tell you the oh, truth. Yeah. Um, but but I want to hear what you guys think. So leave us a comment at www.velocitiesinmusic.com or, velo or youtube.com slash velocitiesinmusic. I'm Jake. I'm Tom. And we are VIMTV, moving music critique forward.